Could you tell me a little bit about the, the different factors which contribute to cancer? So there are a variety of factors that contribute towards cancer. Um, cancer, which is a disease of cells, of which we have millions in the body, normally cells are very tightly controlled in how they divide. Um, and they're important that they are controlled and able us to do such things as grow, um, also heal, and also get rid of damaged cells. Um, and those sorts of things are controlled genetically in our DNA. So it's very important that there are go signals to tell cells to divide appropriately, and there are stop signals to stop that division when it needs to be done. And those signals get out of sync, so there are more goes than there are stops. And then the cancer cells will grow uncontrollably and you'll get a tumour. Now, things can make that more likely are things such as genetic uh, um, parameters, such as if you've inherited a faulty gene from your parents, um, and they will make you one step closer to losing control of those dividing signals. Uh, other things that can also have a, an impact are things such as infections. Um, viruses can cause you more likely to get a cancer. And all of these things are causing more and more damage to the DNA. And these accumulations of damages make the cancer outcome more likely. Um, other factors will be people who have got immunosuppression, so they're less able to fight an immune response. Um, to, to get rid of cancer when it first emerges. And other things are things such as environmental factors and lifestyle choices. Um, pollution can help to cause cancer. Um, toxic substances that you get from smoking. Um, eating too much. Obesity is very closely linked to all sorts of cancers. Um, and also drinking too much as well. So alcohol can also have a tremendous impact on our likelihood of generating cancer. And these are all insults to the cells that once they build up together, they build up multiple hits that cause the damage to be too great for the cell to control, and it loses the ability to decide when to divide appropriately, and then the tumours start to grow. How can we use our immune systems to fight cancer? So the immune system can be used through a process that's called immunotherapy. This is where rather than actually targeting the cancer cells directly, you actually target the immune system to help it to reject the cancer. Now, cancer is probably being rejected by our immune system all the time anyway, of an ongoing process that you might call immunosurveillance or immunoediting. So as a cancer cell uh, grows, it becomes malignant to start to form a tumour, uh, the immune system will often be able to see that and actually eliminate it in the first place. And that's when everything's working very well. When it doesn't work very well, the immune system enters into a, a battle, a standoff, if you will, with the tumour cells that are growing, and it begins in a point where they're fairly well balanced, where the immune system is trying to prevent the cancer growing, but the cancer is also trying to evade the immune system. And that can actually go to such a process where the immune cells aren't able to contain the cancer anymore, and the cancer actually escapes, and this is called the immune escape mechanism. And we can tell that that's been going on in people because we can find certain molecules that regulated on cancer cells that stop them being eaten by immune cells, or we can find other molecules being downregulated that mean that immune cells don't recognize them anymore. Could you tell me a little more about the different types of white blood cells involved in, um, in cancer? So there are a variety of white blood cells involved in cancer. If we're talking about the white blood cells that actually are part of the immune response, then things like cytotoxic T cells are very important in controlling cancer. These are cells that normally detect virally infected uh, normal human cells when they get hold of a virus. The cell within the body will actually present parts of the virus onto the surface of the cell that these cytotoxic T cells will recognize, and it basically means that the cytotoxic T cells will get rid of them and clear them. Um, so those are a very important cell in it. Uh, B cells are also very important. They're a different cell. Rather than directly targeting uh, the cancer cell itself, what they actually do is they produce antibodies which themselves then bind to the target of the cell to cause them to clear or to stop growing. So is there anything we can do to improve our immune responses? Well, we can. What we can actually do is harness those normal adaptive and innate immune responses that can clear cancer cells but are obviously normally seen in the process of getting rid of viruses and bacteria, etc. And we can try and use systems that promote those abilities. So we can use passive therapies like direct targeting antibodies. And these are antibodies that recognize the tumor cells directly. They bind to the surface and flag it up for clearance by the immune system through a variety of different means. Or there are adaptive therapies where we actually train the immune system to better recognize the cancer, to not be suppressed by the cancer anymore, and actually able to clear it. And there are means that we do that through things such as chimeric antigen receptor processes where 
you actually get another molecule that recognises the cancer cell and actually put that into someone's own T-cells and put them back into the patient. And then those T-cells can then home in on and clear the cancer. Um, or there are things such as vaccinations where you can actually vaccinate against a cancer uh, to try and get rid of it. So you recognise certain molecules that are expressed on the surface of the cancer cell and then the vaccination can actually bring in the display and bring in the immune system to get rid of them. So do you see these treatments coming into the clinic anytime soon? How, how far off are they? Quite a number of these therapies are already in the clinic. Passive therapies have been around for several decades now. The adaptive immunotherapies are actually coming into play quite um, frequently now, and there are some really exciting results coming in for clinical trials right as we speak of checkpoint blockers. Now, these are effectively are antibodies that bind to the surface of cytotoxic T-cells and turn off the breaks that stop these T-cells actually clearing the tumour cells and enable a productive T-cell response to actually occur. Um, and these are producing remarkable results in patients that have been resistant to a variety of different sorts of therapies in the past, normal chemotherapy, radiotherapy, and even surgery.